Have you ever felt like you've heard someone calling your name, but nobody has been? Well, you're not alone. 75% of people have had a similar experience, but research suggests up to 10% of the world's population hear voices regularly. The experience is different for every individual. That's why we're traveling to Bradford to find out how some people cope with hearing voices. with a song under the bridge because to me it seems like a time when um, the, the guy that sung the song and wrote the lyrics he was having a hard time in his life and I think like um, it's about kind of getting back to some positivity and uh, life being meaningful and worth living again um, so I can kind of connect with this song because over the last year and a half I've had quite a tough time actually it's been uh, it's been quite tough so I think like um, it's, it, if you've been through something hard, it's such a relief to get back to something positive sort of thing, so... You may think that if someone hears voices, they hear more than one. But for Chris, this isn't the case. He's had one consistent voice that composes both positive and negative, depending on the day. I, I started experiencing um, some issues about 10 years ago. Um, I was sort of 21 at the time and um, I was spending a lot of time by myself and um, my, I wasn't really doing that well on the whole and I started to hear uh, voices basically and um, it, it sort of culminated in a hospital admission and then over the last few years I've kind of been in and out of hospital. The first time I was hearing the voice was 10 years ago and it coincided with a time when uh, Jehovah's Witnesses came around to my house and uh, I, I kind of invited them in and we, we did like a Bible study and um, a lot of it seems to make, seemed to make sense to me and um, I kind of uh, really got into just believing what they said and then the nature of the voice that I hear has like a spiritual element to it. Um, I believe it's like a, a higher power speaking to me. The, the, uh, the way you see your voice is um, something uh, quite interesting because the way I see the voice is that I truly believe that it is someone speaking to me. Even that I'm at stability now, I still believe there is a person speaking to me and I, I'm not sure how, how frequent that is. I guess I guess that's, from the people I've spoke to actually, I've heard that that's quite common, that they, they actually believe their experiences are real. At times, um, the dynamic with the voice has been quite good, but other times, it's what it wants me sometimes to do quite sort of arduous sort of tasks. Um, sometimes like going without things, um, maybe perhaps going without eating or um, foregoing some cigarettes at times and it wants me to like um, do stuff like standing out in the cold and uh, there has been times when it can be uh, it can be quite tough and I guess ways to overcome it one way was um, setting deadlines sort of thing, it was like um, I was setting these deadlines saying I'm going to do it for two or three more days what the voice says and then that's it you know that, that, that deadline that's that's going to be it I'm not going to do any more because the one thing with the voice I hear it was like it wanted me to do all these things but never really told me why it wanted me to do them so I, one of the deadlines I set was I'm um, saying okay in a week's time if it hasn't come to light why I'm supposed to be doing these things then I'm not going to do any more The initial experience of hearing voices can be quite unnerving. Most can remember the precise moment they first heard a voice. I want to try to explain it to a psychiatrist and I said it's like half my brain's good and half my brain's bad. Quite often the bad side is the stronger one, but I try and control it. i just given birth to my second daughter. Uh, I had postnatal depression, which people hadn't picked up on. And when she was six days old, um, I became very ill and um, tried to basically kill myself. 
So uh, I ended up on a mother and baby unit with my youngest daughter. At first I didn't really notice it because I was feeling so ill otherwise. And then gradually it kind of um, crept up on me that I was hearing things in my head and I couldn't work out why I was hearing those things because they weren't happening in real life. The bad thing was I started sometimes reacting to what my voice was saying. You know, if it was telling me to hit someone, I'd hit them. Simple as that. But sometimes I do talk to them and it like I talk them down, if you know what I mean. Like they could be up here and I'll talk them down and then maybe get to all right here. One doctor once told me um, that I'd read the wrong kind of books when I was younger. Um, like I rang Mein Kampf when I was 12, you know, and uh, as you can see looking around the cottage, I've got some pretty weird books in here sometimes. It's got better over the years. I mean, when I first heard the voices, I was scared stiff. I mean, thinking back, you know, to like when I was first ill, obviously you're sitting there and all of a sudden you hear somebody saying, you fucking bastard, why did you do that? And, you know, you're sitting there thinking, where'd that come from? And it would just generate further and further. And, and you get frightened, you do, you get frightened because you, you hear this voice and you think, well, there's nobody else in the room, you know, what what's going on? You know, like we're sitting here now. And I'm I'm hearing voices while I'm sitting here talking to you. But the good voices that, that I can hear at the moment, you know, they're saying, tell them the truth on. Tell them how, you, you know, whatever you say, they're not going to be upset. Between 70 and 90% of people who hear voices have done so following a traumatic event in their life. I think they've diagnosed me with uh, schizophrenic and uh, what do they call it now? Uh, uh, schizophrenic. Paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah, that's it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one, chap. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one. Uh, so I don't, I don't really talk about them. Hearing voices. That's what it means. Hearing voices. I must have said to them when I was poor, I was hearing voices. I think I told them there were quite a few. There were some here, some there. You know what I mean? Like people do. I just thought people were at me, getting at me, telling me stuff. And I used to say, I wish I'd go away. There were no signs. It just came. Just just came like that. And uh, we had to get uh, people in to see me. And uh, uh, I was living in some flats with my lad. And uh, I was still work. I was I was working then, and I used to do sixty, seventy hours a week. And that's a lot of hours. I used to work weekends, Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings. Because if I didn't do that, I just felt like I was going to be a failure in life, and I was going to be a failure to my lad. I was a damn good worker, and I grafted. My dad was a grafter. He's always been a grafter, but he's dead. He's dead now. My dad he died about ten years ago. My dad used to whip me with a leather belt. They got down to that, and they think that brought it on as well. I uh, I have problems, but I, I have to deal with it. I, what I do at winter time, I stand here. And I look at this tree here, there's a tree round here. I look at all birds and robins and that, and I stand there. I can get great satisfaction out of it sometimes, you know. It's just watching nature, is, you know, and listening to records. Now, I'm a big lover of music. I've got my earphones where well, I'm with well, doggies, and I put them on regular and it just soothes me head, it calms the anxiety down and it just calms my system down and I love it, you know, it's a beautiful feeling.
Dr Rufus May runs the Hearing Voices Group in Bradford. He recommends that people should engage with the voices they hear rather than suppress them. My name's Rufus. Uh, I'm a, I've worked as a psychologist for 20 years in the NHS. Um, now I'm freelance. Um, so I facilitate the Hearing Voices Group here in Bradford with Richard. Uh, when I first came to this group, I was uh, recommended it by uh, it, it was a counsellor that he'd had experience in, in hearing voices. I learned profiling, and that's a method of helping you distinguish who, who they are, what they are, and maybe what even the purpose is of the voice, or what role they play in your life. I use an approach called voice dialogue. Sometimes we do that in the group. That seems to be helpful for some people where we ask the person to ask their voice questions and get, get a dialogue going with the, with the voice. Um, and sometimes that can really help people. It's somewhere where I can come and feel normal, tell people what I'm experiencing without it sounding like way out. Oh my God, what, what, what's happening here? I actually feel like I fit. All sorts of things can happen when people get together and, as equals, try and help each other. I guess we, we, we've inherited a very top-down way of helping, where you know, doctors prescribe or psychologists say, this is what's best for you. And actually, I think a lot more exciting things happen when you create a more level playing field where everybody's seen as having some wisdom and people try and help each other. It's difficult for people to talk about this condition, as it's different for everyone. But each day, people like Chris, Anne, David and Richard learn how to cope with the voices they hear. Opening up is a good thing because it gets it all out. It, it's out of your head. It gets everything out. We haven't really got a language for it. You know, in Western culture, it's taboo. So, in a way, in a group, we develop that. The basic illness is the same, but each person has their own little bit that's different. It is a personal experience. However, when I've been in hospitals and things and I've met other, um, other people who are experiencing uh, similar um, circumstances, and I, uh, I can identify with them. I finally sort of got the courage to start speaking, and once I started speaking, it, it it, it's helped me a lot with what I'm hearing mm -hmm. and what I'm experiencing. So if you two or three of you get together and start talking, um, like you, you hear bits from them and they hear bits from you. And other people who are experiencing the same can empathise with you and they explain what they're going through and we can talk things over. And sometimes you will say something to somebody and I'll say, well, it's funny you saying that, but I've been suffering with that kind of thing, but I just thought it was, you know, something else. You can get very lost, but if you discuss things with other people, it becomes, oh yeah, I can look at it like that. They don't always share everything, um, but sometimes they might say something that kind of resonates and that might be something you can find useful yourself to try and approach or something, some sort of coping method. We have a husband who comes with his wife He's much more comfortable now talking about her voices with her. If he hadn't come to the group, he wouldn't be able to do that. Try to be positive. Get these negative thoughts out of your head. Start believing in yourself. And uh, take each day as it comes.